Hello everyone, this module will talk about the different disorders for lipid and lipoprotein metabolism and it is divided into two parts. This is part one. During the lecture discussion, you have learned about the different lipids and lipoproteins. This time we have to learn the different abnormalities which are connected to them. And to know this, we first have to know the different reference ranges. Our topic for today would, of course, be the different reference ranges, and the three abnormalities will be atherosclerosis, coronary heart disease, and dyslipidemias. Let's start the discussion with the different reference ranges. The reference ranges below belong to the lipid profile, and when we say lipid profile, these are four different tests, namely total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglyceride. Total cholesterol is sometimes only called as cholesterol or TC, while HDL stands for high density lipoprotein and LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. Triglyceride is sometimes abbreviated as TAG or TAG. The reference range for total cholesterol is 140 to 200, which has the highest limit among the tests. HDL has 40 to 70 and has the lowest limit. LDL has 50 to 130 and triglyceride has 60 to 150. And all of these are in milligrams per deciliter. If we want to convert them to the SI unit, which is the international standard for measurement, we use millimole per liter. That means we have to divide these values by a certain number. And for total cholesterol, HDL, and LDL, we divide them by 38.67, while triglyceride values, milligram per deciliter, is divided by 88.57. Now that we know the reference ranges, let's now discuss atherosclerosis and coronary heart disease. What is atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis is defined as the buildup of plaque inside the arteries. The significance of the plaque is that as it builds up over time, it can harden and it can narrow down the artery, which will then limit the flow of oxygen to the different parts of the body. Aside from this, plaques can also burst or rupture. And when this happens, it allows blood clot inside of the artery. In the brain, if this happens, it's known as stroke. And if this happens in the heart, it's known as heart attack. Let's differentiate two terms that are a bit similar, and this is arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis is a general term given when arteries are hardened or are thickened, which leads to poor blood circulation, while atherosclerosis is a specific type of arteriosclerosis, which is resulting from the plaque buildup. Atherosclerosis in the coronary arteries is known as the coronary heart disease or CHD. This is also known as coronary artery disease, which is a type of ischemic heart disease. Ischemic means that an organ, which in this case is the heart, is not getting enough blood and oxygen, which in this case is caused by the plaque buildup in the artery. The incidence of a person having coronary or developing coronary heart disease is strongly associated with a very high cholesterol serum concentration. In 1988, the NCEP ATP gave a list of risk factors for heart disease, and in 2002, this list was updated recommending that adults should have a fasting lipoprotein profile or lipid profile once every five years. 
These are the following positive risk factors for CHD. And when we say positive, these are the conditions that would most likely increase your chances of developing CHD. First is age. Male who are more than 45 or 45 years old and females starting from 55 and more than 55 years old will most likely develop CHD compared to younger individuals. Family history also plays a part for CHD development. Individuals who are smoking cigarette and who have high blood pressure of more than 140 over 90 have a higher risk for CHD and individuals with diabetes mellitus or metabolic syndrome. For ease of memorization, positive risk factors is also known as at risk for CHD. A stands for age. F stands for family history. C stands for cigarette. H for hypertension and D for diabetes mellitus. These are the other positive risk factors that shows the relationship of two laboratory tests to CHD. So if a patient has at least one risk factor, a value of 160 milligram per deciliter of LDL will already increase the risk for CHD. But if a patient has at least two risk factors that were mentioned earlier, a borderline value of 130 will increase the risk. But if a patient already has CHD, a normal value LDL of 100 milligrams per deciliter will already impose a threat. But for HDL, a decreased value of less than 40 milligrams per deciliter will increase the chance for CHD. The following are negative risk factors, which lessens the likelihood for CHD development. An increased or a high HDL value of more than 60 milligrams per deciliter is a negative risk factor. And an LDL of less than 100 milligram per deciliter is also a negative risk factor, which means that HDL is inversely proportional to CHD development, while LDL is directly proportional. Aside from the coronary artery, atherosclerosis can occur in different arteries as well. If it is seen in the carotid artery, it is known as the carotid artery disease. If it is seen in the peripheral artery, it's the peripheral artery disease. And if it is seen in the artery in the kidney, then it is known as the chronic kidney disease. And that ends our discussion for the first part of the different disorders of lipid and lipoprotein metabolism. See you all in part two.